down here. Thought I'd do a quick video on what makes a 993 get under my skin. Now you hear a lot of people saying that the Porsche uh, gets under their skin. You know, they use that term and I, people ask you, why Why did they do that? Well, I'll try and answer that as best I can just now. Well, I think one of the, the first reasons straight into the office is probably how it looks. I mean, look at that. Right, I mean, it's just a... It's just a beautiful looking car, you know? And... But it's, it's got that kind of timeless beauty that's kind of hard to define. I've been a 911, I've been a Porsche enthusiast my entire life and uh, I've drawn these cars and, you know, I've, I've coloured them in and all the rest of it and I've been looking at them for all this time. And I can honestly say, I've never got bored with the shape of it. I don't know, I mean, it's just got that lovely, timeless, classic shape. It's, um, it's kind of functional and it's beautiful. So that's probably the first thing. I mean, let's be honest. Um, looks aren't everything, right? But unless you get that initial spark of um, attraction, you know, it's hard to, it's hard for things to develop otherwise. But for an 11 in particular, you certainly get that initial spark of attraction. I mean, you really do. You, you, these cars look good in photos, but by God, they look good in the flesh, you know. And when you're up close to one, they take on a, sort of a slightly different kind of appearance with their, with the, their, their dimensions and their shapes and their curves. Beautiful looking thing. It's hard not to fall in love with it. So that's probably the first thing. Um, I love the looks, and you probably, you probably kind of dreamt about it ever since you were a wee boy, you know, you see, you had a poster on your wall like I did, and you kind of grew up with this kind of mystique around the post brand, and, you know, maybe maybe it was like a dream for you like it was for me growing up, and then to actually have the dream realised, well, that's pretty special, you know, so these things as well are special, but on top of all that, it's, it's the fact of the matter is, guys, that these cars are fantastic cars, right, I mean, they really are, I mean, for lots of reasons, they drive great, they're reliable, they're robust, you know, they're, um, they're fast, you know, they're everything you want them to be. You can drive them to the shops and back, like they say, or drive them to the racetrack. You can do a lot of things. They're very, very versatile. Um, and they, they feel special. You know, that's the other thing. It's the, way, it's the way that they make you feel. They make you feel special. Driving these cars or any NLM, driving any Porsche, right? But for me personally, driving the air-cooled Porsches, the air-cooled NLMs, every single drive is an event. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, it's, it's a special event that you, you, you remember. I mean, I'm out here on a Sunday afternoon in the Duke's Pass, um, it's not too far from where I live, and I'm having a blast today, you know, even a drive like today, I'm, you won't forget it, it's the way that it makes you feel, so there's, there's, there's another thing, also, it's, it's, for me, I think, one of the reasons they get under skin as well is because from a financial point of view, they make a lot of sense, you know, if you buy a new car, or any, any car, you know, you might lose a third in depreciation pretty quick, and then another third after another few years, you know, if you buy an old 911, the depreciation's pretty much out of it, so you don't really lose much money from the purchase price point of view. And the right car at the right price, you know, you probably won't spend much in maintenance other than servicing a lot of the time, you know, if you're lucky, but um, obviously you spend in maintenance as well, that's part of the thing. And if it's your hobby car, you really, you, you can't complain about that. But they're not, what I'm trying to get at is they're not expensive to, to keep. Some people think Porsches are expensive, they're not really. Some might be, but maybe they've bought the right the wrong car. Buy the wrong car, buy the wrong Porsche. It can cost you a lot and make an engine rebuild or something like that. But see, Alan, with the right knowledge, you can mitigate all these things and you can, you know, you can anticipate the, the costs. So cost is another big part. Um, these cars are dead reasonable uh, to keep. So then you've got, you've got the beautiful looks, you've got the dream realised, you've got, they're quite cheap to maintain. Um, and they just, the more you drive them, the better they get. That's the other thing. I mean, 911, still 911, as I say, is a trip for you to pleasure. And the more that you drive these cars, the more you appreciate them. And uh, the more the more experience you have with them, the kind of the, the, the better they drive because you you become a wee bit more confident in your driving ability. These cars drive quite distinctive from most other cars. Rear engine, well, all weight in the back. You've got to sort of handle that pendulum effect, and it's a quite a, quite a tricky thing to get a hand a handle on. But when you do, it's a skill that's really really nice to master, and you, it's a it's a kind of it's a wee sort of a challenge if you like. Um, so you're always you're always engaged. You're always challenged. You're always thinking, how do I how do I improve? So you, you bond with the car, you know, you spend time with it, you get more and more involved, you, and that's when it starts to get under your skin. And then you end up having it for years, and you know, you end up, you, you don't want to really part with it. And I can't see myself ever parting with this car at this point in time. You know, who knows what the future holds, right? But I wouldn't, at this point in time, I do not see me wanting to part with it. It's too special, you know? And this car, I can tell you the now, guy, this, this car's under my skin for sure, and I've had it eight years just now. And I'm probably some kind of Porsche prisoner because I can't really see myself parting it. There's, there's, there's nothing else that I would really want apart from another Porsche to run alongside it. And I'm actually thinking about doing that anyway. 
So they become part of you, they become part of your personality. Almost, it sounds crazy, but they almost become like a family member. I know guys that have had 911s or you know, maybe boxers and that as well, and other Porsches for maybe 10, 12, 15 years plus. Other guys I speak to, they've had their, their, their car for 30 years and uh, they've got no intentions of selling it. That's what these cars are like, that's what they try and they, they, inv they evoke that kind of emotion in you where you just feel as like you just want to keep it forever, you know? So that's what it's meant when you say, you know, that a Porsche gets under your skin. Um, you certainly, you certainly do get under your skin and uh, but guys, they'll, they'll enrich your life experience. So if you're fortunate enough to be in a position where you can afford one of these cars, don't hesitate. Um, you know, life is kind of fickle and you don't really know what's in the corner for any. So just live for the moment, guys. Just get yourself a Porsche and have a time of your life and uh, enjoy every mile and don't look back. Hope that's given you some insight. If you're ready to give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more content. And uh, well, I'll see you on the road and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.